Hello everyone, welcome to the April 2024 edition of the What's New and Next with Citrix webinar. My name is Monica Grismer and I am a Senior Product Marketing Manager here at Citrix. My colleagues and I are thrilled to be discussing licensing, LTSR updates, product updates, monitoring updates, and more with you today. Without further ado, here is today's speaker lineup. My colleague Adam will be talking to you about licensing. Myself, I'm going to cover the LTSR. Jason Samuel will be covering new capabilities and features. And then Christian Schwindemann will be closing us out with information on Uber Agent. So just went through that, taking a closer look at the four distinct sections we are going to cover today. There is a ton of information to cover across the board. In case you missed it, we have had a number of updates at the beginning of this year, which have been really impactful to our customers. And hopefully you get a lot of value out of our deeper dive today. Also wanted to let you know, this webinar will be available on demand in about a week or less. So keep an eye on your emails for that. All of the content we'll talk about throughout the webinar today will be included in the on-demand page. Additionally, we're going to do a live Q&A here at the end, so please keep your questions coming in the chat when we're not presenting. We'll try to answer those in the chat and then hopefully get to them live. If we don't get the, to them live, then we will have a follow-on blog as well. Tons of great content coming at you, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Adam. Thanks, Monica. Now I'd like to talk about our new Citrix subscription offerings and how we're looking to make it easier to do business with Citrix across 2024 and in the future. So as we looked across our portfolio, a few key themes really jumped out to us and ways we can help you deliver a better environment for your users and frankly, do more with the Citrix entitlements you already have. And the first is capability. We really want to help you solve additional challenges and use cases inside your environment, whether that's in the VDI and DAS space, across networking, or even a new web and SaaS app access scenarios. We want to make it easier for you to grow and scale your operations by increasing capacity inside your existing investments. And we want to help you consolidate other products into the Citrix platform to really help you reduce your total cost of ownership, reduce complexity in your environment, and de-risk some of what you're doing, whether that's in the app delivery space or the VDI space, and generally help you make more out of what you're paying us for and get more value from your Citrix subscriptions. And I think you're going to see this uh, take place over this year in your conversations with your account teams. And really this notion of simplicity and value is going to jump out at you in the way we talk about the platform and everything that it can do for your business. Now, looking across everything Citrix offers, of course, VDI and DAS is what comes to mind first for most of our Citrix customers. And probably many of you listening to this webinar are traditional VDI and DAS administrators. So you're pretty familiar with this idea of connecting any user or any device uh, to any application. And of course, at Citrix, we're all about the hybrid cloud infrastructures. So any infrastructure works for us. Um, we're happy to help you attach um, any cloud platform, any on-prem uh, set of hypervisors, any way you want to tie your environment together. Um, we've got a solution that helps you do that and do it at, with agility and in the most cost-effective manner. But as we looked across the other technologies we had to offer, things like our ADC with the Netscaler platform, uh, secure private access and enterprise browser to really extend your access out for that any app scenario to web and SaaS, we realized that we had a very powerful set of tools and we can make it easier for you to take advantage of them. So by bundling all of this together in our new offerings, we give you the ability to provide zero trust access and complete observability across your, your different application types while giving your users a unified experience and make it easier for them to launch all these different types of applications or desktops. And that's really powerful in what lets you do with your Citrix licenses. And it gives you a competitive advantage uh, over your peers in the industry because you've got a secure platform to deliver everything uh, that your users might need. Now, of course, the question we get is, you know, what do these new offerings look like? Uh, and we just released these in uh, March of this year. And I, I'm happy to say we've made dramatic strides towards simplifying the way you do business with Citrix and the number of offerings in our portfolio. Um, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that we had thousands of SKUs uh, in the past and different ways to buy the product. And frankly, that meant that a lot of your time uh, spent with the account team was really focused on, you know, what SKU do I need? Which edition of the product do I want? You know, which features are most important to me? 
Um, so we've consolidated those hundreds or thousands of SKUs down to really two primary SKUs and two primary subscriptions that will make sense for our enterprise customers. And on the left, we've got Citrix Universal Hybrid Multi-Cloud. And on the right, we have the Citrix Platform License. And I don't want you to think about these as, as better and best, right? Because that's not really how we're looking at this internally. We look at Citrix Universal Hybrid Multi-Cloud as being everything you need for the traditional app and desktop virtualization case. So we've got the premium functionality of both CVAD and DAS in that package, as well as permanent hybrid entitlements. As I said, we're all about hybrid environments. We understand that uh, the cloud is a great fit for some companies or some workloads. On-prem is a fit for others, and that makes sense to us as well. We want to give you all the flexibility to leverage those environments uh, for the most cost-effective or secure method that you need. It also includes our app protection. It includes uh, zero trust and adaptive authentication, our endpoint management capabilities, as well as Netscaler. And that's a new thing for us. We're actually bundling in the Netscaler capacity with the Citrix Universal Hybrid Multi-Cloud license. And now, of course, those are software subscriptions, right? So you can run basically all the Netscaler you need for your environment, whether that's for a Citrix use case or a non-Citrix use case. Uh, so as you dig into that with your account team, we'll be looking for opportunities to help you save uh, across other platforms you might be using for networking capabilities today and really look at ways you can leverage Netscaler more in your environments. And again, that's gonna be rolled into that license. Uh, and if you need the hardware devices for Netscaler as well, we'll sell those to you as a, at a cost plus basis, right? So don't worry about that. You've got all the software entitlement you need for Netscaler, and when you need hardware, we'll make that available to you as well. Now on the right, we look at Citrix platform, and that gives you everything we had in Universal, uh, as well as secure web and SaaS access using secure private access and enterprise browser. Um, it gives you our whole observability suite. So that includes security and performance analytics, as well as our new acquisition, Uber Agent, which is a really powerful monitoring tool uh, that we've got some fantastic deployments already in uh, accounts with hundreds of thousands of seats. So uh, a very mature technology that we're rolling in and making available to customers in platform. And we're also adding a little bit more Netscaler capacity there. We've got unlimited Netscaler um, for any of your needs on the networking side and some premium features there as well that tag in. Um, but across the board, these are both very powerful offerings. Um, they're going to fit the needs of our customers based on where you're at. If you're talking about a pure VDI and DAS space on the left, or if you really want to go all in with Citrix on the right and let us help you take advantage of everything we have to offer. Uh, now, I have included a QR code there that'll take you right to our feature matrix. I'll say it's a little tough on mobile to view, um, but definitely have a look, understand where the different additions fit in and what might make sense to you. But what's most important is that as you have conversations with your account team, we're really going to focus on helping you get more value out of Citrix and in finding the right fit for you in terms of these two licenses and, uh, and start having more conversations about your deployment and less about the sales cycle. So I think it's going to be a really uh, productive move for everyone on this call. And it's something that you'll see over the coming months uh, or years as your subscriptions come up for renewal. Back to you, Monica. Thanks so much, Adam. Going forward from the new licensing updates that we just discussed, I wanted to dive into the new long-term service release. So before I get into this, to segue from the licensing section, the long-term service release is for our on-premises customers, but in the new Citrix Universal Hybrid Multi-Cloud and Citrix Platform licenses, you get the best of on-premises and cloud. So that means, yes, the LTSR is applicable and available inside both of those license types. So that's hugely exciting. And let's get into more of the announcements. So as I said, the new 2402 long-term service release is now live as of last week. So you are some of the first to hear about it. It's hot off the presses. I'm sure almost all of you are familiar with the LTSR but we continue to roll out these releases about every two years or so because of the predictability, the upgrade cycles, and we know they work incredibly well within your environments. So the long-term service release has a five-year life cycle and support policy from the time of release. There is simplified management and updates through the release of CUs or cumulative updates. Additionally, there are tons of new features in this LTSR, which I'm going to cover. We also work to get the long-term service releases validated with your top compliance standards. So that includes FIPS, 508, common criteria. That will be coming soon. It does take us a little while to validate those, but you will see follow-up content when we have the full validation for 2402 
and we have more included in here. Additionally, with the release of the Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops 2402 LTSR, we also have a Citrix Workspace App 2402 LTSR for Windows. So this Workspace App client is obviously the location for your users to access their apps and desktops. So this long-term service release Workspace App has a support timeline of three years, which is much more extended than the regular Workspace App timelines, and a maintenance timeline of 15 to 18 months with cumulative updates every two months. Included in this Workspace App for Windows are top experience enhancements, things like Activity Manager. That's our new dropdown that allows for users to self-service so they don't have to call help desks to log out of their sessions, restart sessions or shut down sessions and more. There are also a number of security enhancements including enhanced domain pass-through and our enterprise browser which is LTSR compatible so that is an enterprise grade web browser which if you're not familiar with it definitely talk to your Citrix reps. It has been a huge conversation piece and helps secure those web applications and anything that your users are accessing on a browser. Again, that's LTSR compatible. And additionally, we also have auto update and version control and silent background updates, allowing admins easier and more predictable updates across the board. It's important to note if you are on the LTSR track today, what operating systems are supported across the board. So take a screenshot of this, take a closer look so you make sure your VDAs, your platform, and if you're on the Linux VDA, that you aren't going to fall behind with your updates. You might need to migrate to the new LTSR to take advantage of the latest operating system support. To that point, talking about long-term service release versions, wanted to show an updated slide here of 1912 LTSR, 2203, and 2402. Wanted to mention that the 1912 LTSR reaches end of life in December of this year. I know a ton of our customers are on the 1912 LTSR. If you are, migrating straight to 2402 might be a great option for you. So then you would get over four years of innovations and capabilities. Also, you may need to make the step first to 2203. Whatever works best for your environments, but be mindful of the maintenance timeline. And there's tons of great stuff and tools for you to help migrate. But as I said at the beginning of this section, the LTSR isn't just great for extended support and maintenance. It is chock full of huge features for you to leverage today. We put them in categories. I know this is an eye chart on how we have improved and are working to improve admin and users experiences through this LTSR. And just because you're on premises doesn't mean you have to lack quality. We've added things like Web Studio for on premises, Auto Scale for on premises. We've added a compatible component is our secure private access for on premises. We've added a number of security and compliance updates as well as support for automatic video codec, unified communications, and more for your users. So I'm going to give you just a taste in the coming slides of key features or key capabilities in each of these categories. So you can take something with you and know, hey, if I migrated today to the 2402 LTSR, I would get this great capability and get the latest and greatest from Citrix. Kicking us off with our workload and device flexibility section, wanted to touch on machine creation services. We have added so many items for you to help provision from general and on-premises hypervisors. We've introduced things like Citrix Moonshot Machine Manager plugin to replace the older HPE Moonshot plugin for power management. We also now have Azure Stack HCI integration, VM management and provisioning features like official support for disks with multiple partitions, a solution to detect and reset duplicate SCCM GUIDs during image preparation, and so much more. We also support Mac activation across the board. So why I'm rattling all of this off about machine creation services is this is a proprietary provisioning capability that Citrix has 
that makes admins' lives so much simpler when deploying their Citrix technologies. And we're just continuing to beef it up and you can get more capabilities than ever in this LTSR. Looking at operational and IT efficiency, I wanted to double down on saying that Web Studio for on-premises is in the long-term service release. Web Studio is an enhanced and simplified user interface that you might be familiar with if you have any cloud deployments. You will know that the management interface is all in one location. There is so much you can do with it from managing your applications to policies, hosting, managing your storefront. This interface and all of its integrations are now available in your on-premises environments. This has been huge for IT efficiency and this is something that you can use today to speed up your processes and also with the addition of Web Studio, you also have capabilities built in like Autoscale. Autoscale allows for schedule-based scaling and load-based scaling of machines to allow for optimized spending so that your machines aren't running in the background full-time, even your on-premises machines. So switching to the 2402 LTSR, this capability alone may be worth the upgrade. So we've heard that from a number of customers. Looking at security, there are so many security capabilities. If you just think the amount of patching, policies, updates that you build in year after year here at Citrix, making the move to 2402 is a no-brainer. I'm calling out specifically here in case you've missed it, our Citrix session recording feature. Citrix session recording has evolved so much, it's kind of become a misnomer. Session recording goes beyond just recording a user's session itself. You can support strictly audio now on the far right. If you see that you have call centers, individuals making Zoom calls, Teams calls, you can get the audio out of sessions now. You also can set contextual triggers to start recording a session based on a tag. If something happens within a user session, then the session recording agent will trigger the recording to start, and then you can go back and play that later. You can also hide specific apps in lossy screen recording. So if there's specific apps that you shouldn't be recording due to compliance standards, session recording can gray those out. It's a huge functionality and so many capabilities are built into this 2402 LTSR. So it's a great time to try it out. And then last but not least, high definition user experience technologies or HDX technologies are some of the biggest drivers for adoption and end user satisfaction here at Citrix. And we have introduced the AV1 codec inside of the LTSR. You leverage the strengths of AV1 and H.265 codecs and you get amazing graphics performance and reduced CPU utilization. It supports encoding for NVIDIA and Intel GPUs and decoding for NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel. Having a like local and sometimes even better than local experience is huge for end user satisfaction and probably would help with any headaches that you might be getting from your end users on their experiences. Don't sleep on the HDX features that we have rolling out. This is one of many. With that, before I change speakers here, wanted to go ahead and say if you want more on how to tactically upgrade your up environments and hear more about in-place upgrades versus parallel upgrades, please scan the QR code. This goes to the on-demand masterclass. My great colleagues previously a few months ago talked about the LTSR and how to make the move today. So since we're generally available, go ahead and start testing it in your environments and start that migration. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Jason. All right. Thank you, Monica. And uh, now we'll cover some of our top new and upcoming capabilities with Citrix DAS and VDI. So our first thing is going to be the visibility and the cost per user and desktop. It's basically a way to help you understand your adoption and cost of your Citrix environment. Um, the dashboard itself kind of breaks down the usage of your Citrix environment down to a per user level. So you will know 
um, what your cost is per user to deliver applications and desktops to your users. It also breaks it down by the cloud providers, um, Amazon, Azure, and Google Cloud to see where your spend is, uh, especially in a multi-cloud uh, or hybrid environment. This comes in very handy. Um, it breaks it down by machine OS type, by desktop type. The actual cost per user is broken down from a persistent desktop standpoint to a pool desktop standpoint. So it really gets granular for you to help you understand how your Citrix environment is being used. Um, it is very contextual, so it can be tailored with filters and tags and other things that um, make sense in your environment. And it really, really gives you the ability to modify your environment as needed based on what's actually being used such as at the bottom of the screenshot, for example, where Azure, you have multiple VM sizes in use, but some of them are being used more than others, some cost more than others. So you can make a very educated uh, decision on how to tweak your environment for the best cost savings. Also, all of this information is actually exportable to other systems that you might be using in your organization, like Power BI or Tableau to help with reporting. Um, this is thanks to REST API and OData, so it will actually connect to um, multiple systems that you might need. So it's, this data is not just here in this dashboard. It is available for use within your organization as needed. All right, the next thing that I'd like to talk about is the Citrix DAS for Amazon Workspaces core feature. This is now in public tech preview. This allows you for uh, the, the capability for you to be able to deploy a complete desktop solution using the Citrix DAS control plane and the Amazon Workspaces core control planes. This is a direct API integration in Web Studio. It's a five-step process to go from zero to desktops very quickly. Um, there are curated machines, so there's no guesswork involved uh, in choosing what desktops are best for Citrix. And it is a very easy to understand flow because it is all within the DAS Web Studio. So for a Citrix admin, there's not a lot of uh, context switching between two consoles. Everything is in one single console, one single flow. Um, no having to learn about uh, cloud infrastructure too deeply because these um, these constructs are actually very abstracted behind the scenes. So you just click through the five steps and you go from zero to desktops um, very quickly. Those desktops can be uh, paid for against the AWS account at a fixed rate monthly pricing, which means that you predictable costs in the cloud. Uh, you know exactly what you're paying each month for each user and for each business unit for chargeback purposes and so on. And there is no uh, upfront um, uh, costs or any commitment. It is month to month. We will also soon have the pay as you go hourly feature as well for desktops if you want to run them for a, a week or two at a time rather than the entire month. The other big benefit of this feature is that you can bring your own Microsoft 365 licensing. So you can run the latest and greatest uh, Office productivity uh, through the M365 BOL, BYOL uh, feature. Now for just a quick video by one of my colleagues here, I'll kind of walk through exactly how a deployment looks. It is a five-step process here in the web studio. It's fully integrated. Um, here uh, is a Mac uh, actually logging into the Workspace app. It's actually using Azure AD, but you can use any identity provider you like. Um, it is up to you if you want to use Okta, Azure AD, uh, Ping, whatever it is that you have. Once you've logged in, you simply click on a desktop. And here, the Workspace's core desktop is uh, there along with other desktops from other cloud providers and on-prem. The launch is very quick because uh, Amazon Workspace's instances are up all the time. They're up 24-7. You're paying one cost per month, but these systems are up 24-7 ready for a login. Um, once you've logged in, your M365 has single signed you on. So here's an example of Teams. It is uh, SSO'd you in. And it is optimized with Citrix HDX technology. So uh, the best possible video and audio quality. Um, this slide is simply showing PowerPoint, but it also shows the uh, actual uh, integration capability. You have all of the traditional Citrix goodness uh, with Amazon Workspaces. Um, these instances are actually hybrid Azure AD joined. That is an option if you prefer, um, especially if you're bringing M365 over. This is really helpful for that SSO capability. 
Um, the other uh, piece about this is that we are using the HDX Rendezvous V2 with EDT. So this is the best possible HDX experience as well. Uh, the other th thing I wanted to point out is uh, other Citrix uh, components that you might be using uh, do work here as well, including Citrix Fast, which provided the SSO into the uh, system. You saw that there was no credentials that were asked for. It simply carried over what was from Workspace app through the Azure AD login. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the Citrix automation strategy. We've been working on a infrastructure as code methodology at Citrix, and this is to basically automate Citrix deployments using the best possible practices without introducing uh, a lot of the human error that sometimes happens uh, when you're managing large environments or multiple environments. Um, this is, simplifies ongoing maintenance, as well as gives you the ability to repeat your deployments. Um, it avoids configuration drift. For example, if someone makes a change on your team and someone else is not aware of it, uh, it could potentially cause a conflict. But if everyone is maintaining uh, everything as infrastructure as code in a repository, there is no capability for uh, individual actions to impact your Citrix environment. Everything is being maintained as essentially notepad files. Everything is in plain text and being deployed and it can actually be checked during the day. So for mitigation efforts, you can actually look at your configuration and compare. Um, it does uh, support hybrid multi-cloud. So uh, at this time, we support Azure, Google Cloud, EC2. We just introduced capability also for MCS with on-prem hypervisors, such as vSphere, Nutanix, and ZenServer. Um, we do also have um, uh, the ability to use Ansible that is going to be coming later this year. Um, and our target is to be able to use this automation for all VDI and DAS resources. So including LTSR, uh, this is uh, available for you to be able to automate your environment rather than building it by hand. In future phases, we will target other Citrix uh, services, products and services for automation, such as Citrix WEM, PVS, and uh, a lot of our other uh, items like session recording, for example. But these will be in future phases. Right now, we're targeting VDI and DAS. This is available. It is uh, it is available in the uh, HashiCorp Terraform registry. You can use it today. Uh, it's also we also have templates available on GitHub as well as uh, direct interaction with our engineering teams that are um, handling this initiative. And we do have three deployment guide guides that are currently available. Um, on our tech zone. Um, these cover Azure, Google Cloud, and EC2. Basically, how to build an environment from scratch using infrastructure as code and then the ongoing maintenance of it. The next thing I'd like to talk about is our introduction to our Citrix VDA for Mac OS. This is in public tech preview now, and it basically allows you to be able to install a VDA on a Mac OS and be able to deliver that Mac experience remotely uh, to a user that is sitting anywhere in the world uh, using any device. Uh, it is very similar to our remote PC type capability that we already have for Windows systems. So um, it it's built upon our HDX technology. It has all of the same capabilities with HDX. It, you're using the Workspace app and you're able to um, basically display uh, everything that is happening on the Mac remotely. So this use case comes in um, very nicely with developers, with uh, animation uh, rendering, um, with any type of um, GIS type workloads. Anyone that might be using a Mac today but wants to be able to use it remotely, they now have that power of that Mac, but on any form factor from anywhere on the, in, in the, on the planet. Um, this is full seamless integration with uh, with our DAS and with our CVAD architecture that we have. So your existing environment today uh, will work with this. It is essentially um, another machine catalog. It's just another way to deploy a VDA. And with that, I will pass it on to the next speaker. We will have many more features coming this year. And this is just a small, small insight into some of the capabilities that we have coming. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. And with this, we're in the next section introducing Citrix Uber Agent to the Citrix platform. But what is Uber Agent actually? Uber Agent is a cutting edge EUC 
end user computer monitoring solution. Uber Agent comes in two different product editions Uber Agent UXM, which is user experience monitoring, and ESA, endpoint security analytics. But as the name Uber Agent already suggests, this is an agent based approach, an agent which you can install on physical clients such as laptops or FAT clients, but also on any virtual machines virtual machines that are client OS or server OS machines. And it's important also to understand that it's not just Windows, but also Mac OS machines. This means any computer out there, any virtual machine you today have, no matter if there is Citrix running on it or not, can be equipped with Uber Agent to then collect informations, metrics such as applications running or such in this screenshot example here, crashing. And you will quickly and easily understand what is the cause for application performance bottlenecks or let's say application crashes. And it's also very easy with the visualization that Uber Agent is providing to understand red, green, yellow, if everything is good or things are turning into a direction where you want to take action first. Uber Agent is at the same time highly efficient and a very powerful agent. It is one single agent that serves both of the purposes for performance monitoring and security monitoring, and at the same time just adds 0.5% CPU on top of your existing environment with around about 30 to 60 megabyte of RAM consumption. And at the same time, we are very flexible with the different platforms in the backend where Uber agent can send data actually to then collect all these metrics we just spoke about. So the approach and the use cases that customers today as well you also see is when we look at Uber agent UXM, so the performance monitoring, that we can understand the digital user experience, so the performance that the user is actually experiencing on physical machines. Now you can compare and set this into context to what this experience is moving to virtual machines. Or when you, let's say, move from Windows 10 to Windows 11, or also as we are able to monitor the browser, how this feels like moving from an installed application to a new SaaS application. And this then allows not just to monitor the performance side of the things, but also the adoption and continuous usage of replication. So from a license perspective, for example, where are applications installed but not used? So as we have now collected all these metrics, setting this into the context of security, we can now also understand if there are applications that are outdated. So let's assume Workspace app is in an outdated version installed, or maybe a vulnerable version of a product that you have been deployed and are aware that should be updated. Uber Agent is going to tell you in the dashboard to what extent machines have not been updated and with this are not in line with your compliance and security requirements. And this, very easy, also filterable for different branches, different environments, different physical client types and vendors. And as you see here on the slide also, the platform supported range from physical and virtual machines, single multi-user machines, remote PCs, also to other deployments, which you host today maybe on AVD or Windows 365 managed by Citrix, or if you consider moving from VMware Horizon to a Citrix DAS environment and want to set this into context, you can easily understand how the performance for the users used to be before and now afterwards is. The best thing about Uber Agent is that the backend integrations and with this to support for backends is very flexible and open. We allow customers to use on-premises solutions such as Splunk Enterprise or Elasticsearch, but also integrate with cloud-based solutions. As an example, Splunk on cloud or Azure Log Monitor, but also other solutions such as Kafka and Kibana. And the most important thing to understand is that you can use all of them at the same time. So multiplexing and sending to multiple backends or speaking from Splunk to multiple Splunk indexes with filtered data sets, different teams, different expectations, and with this different data sets. 
So the business outcomes on the very right hand, easily addressable. Improved employee productivity, well, you can now monitor and understand also how our machines leveraged, what are the application actually consuming the resources to then more efficiently put applications into silo, equip power users with the power they expect to operate the applications and business critical processes, and with this improve the overall efficiency and lastly also improve the employee satisfaction in your environment. So talking about these use cases, and I'm not going to talk through all these, these bullet points, this should just give you an idea and you can uh, take a screenshot also if you want to see them or, or review the recording afterwards. Um, but I think I already picked up a lot of these items. For me personally, one of the most important things on the Uber H and UXM performance side of the things on the very left at the last bottom, uh, the, the, the bottom item is the native and the Citrix enterprise browser monitoring capabilities so that you can have these insights into where users are coming from, where users are surfing to, what was the render time for a website and was it slow because the backend was not available, the backend was the bottleneck for providing the actual data sets. And now let's again compare this on the Uber H and ESA side. Was this something that was expected? And is this a common thing to do? We all are aware that certain processes and certain tasks are very common, but there are also tasks common to what an attacker would do. The Maitri attack framework or the Sigma rule integration is such a framework of common attack scenarios, which is integrated where Uber agent will tell you there is something going on, which is very uncommon. At the same time, if you already as of today have rule sets that evaluate if things are not as expected, for example, if you use Sysmon rules, we also can offer you the rule conversion. So Sysmon is a tool that helps you to understand what's going on. While converting these rules into Uber agent, you now have a way to continuously track your environment if these things happen and your rules apply. So I hope this gave you a good overview. If you would like to learn more about Uber agent, please, please reach out to your account team and uh, ask for a demonstration of Uber agent to learn more about the use cases and details and what the dashboards are capable of. And with this, back to you, Monica. Thank you so much, Christian, and to my fellow presenters. I wanted to formally end this section of the webinar with the fact that all Citrix and Netscaler admins now have access to world-class on-demand training. Powered by Pluralsight, we now offer to all Citrix and Netscaler customers with a current and active subscription the ability to create an account and watch a number of on-demand trainings for Citrix administration and Netscaler administration. This is a great resource for you to take advantage today to make sure you're getting the most out of your environments and see what's new and what's upcoming. We're continuing to add more content to this training, so it's a great resource for you to try out and be a part of. With that, I know we had a lot of questions coming in. So let's move on to the q and I see a lot of questions coming in around licensing. So Adam, I will pose to you first. For individuals on previous Citrix licenses and license editions, do they automatically get grandfathered in? What does that look like for licensing with current customers? Yeah, Monica, that's a great question. So, so the answer is is no. Like, we're not we're not going to transition you automatically from one license to another. We're not going to grandfather anyone in. Effectively, with this change to our SKUs, we're we're stopping sale for all the existing SKUs. Uh, Universal Hybrid Multi Cloud and Citrix Platform are new SKUs. You're going to have a conversation with your account team about those, and what that means for you going forward. And the way we're going to set that up is. We're, Again, really trying to drive towards simplicity in the conversations you have with your account team as well. So today, a lot of you have multiple renewals with the Citrix throughout the year, right? So maybe you've got, you know, let's say a thousand DAS licenses up for renew, 
And then maybe, you know, three months down the road, you had another batch of two or 300 you had added on, or maybe you had some net scaler that was separate from all of that as well. And what your account team is going to work with you to do is really try to find the most important renewal events in your upcoming timeline of the next 12 to 18 months. And they're going to try to co-term uh, your, your assets around those big renewal events, right? So sometime in the near future, we'll find that spot. We'll, we'll give you licenses to either to carry you up to that point or, or maybe pull some in from the future. Uh, but we want to get to the point where you really are having one conversation uh, with Citrix around your license. Um, so we're going to convert you then to universal hybrid multi-cloud or to Citrix platform and make that the focal point, right? And what's important there is that then going forward, as you work with your account team, we talk to you about how you're using Citrix. We really want to focus on your deployment and your adoption of Citrix technologies and less around the licensing conversations so that that can happen, you know, multiple times a year. So I'm hoping that's going to make everything easier in terms of your interactions with the account team and really help you develop a better Citrix relationship where we're focused not just on renewing these individual license pockets, but actually helping you get more value out of what you're doing with Citrix. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for that added context. Also, one more thing before we move on on licensing. I got some questions. What if individuals are on standalone or previously add-on licenses, specifically analytics? So what happens for our analytics customers today? Yep. So as part of this change, we're getting rid of all the add-on add -on and standalone license options, right? So analytics will be part of the Citrix platform license. So odds are pretty good if that you're an analytics customer today, that platform will be a good fit for you going forward. Uh, and that's a conversation, again, you'll have with your account team as they look at what's going on um, inside your account, where your license bundles come up for renewal. Um, and that would be the, the most likely discussion. Um, now, there are some customers that might be like, you know what, that's not going to be a fit. That doesn't make sense. Uh, and for those, we'll help you have a transition path, you know, off of analytics and back to universal hybrid multi-cloud, if that's where you land. Um, but generally speaking, it's a good time to talk to your account team, figure out what's really important for you inside your Citrix subscriptions, and uh, we're going to help you get the most out of it. Yeah, thanks, Adam. I also noticed we had a ton of questions overall, as I said, coming in about licensing. Um, one that came up over and over is, will there be concurrent user licenses? So the short answer is yes. The new license modes of universal hybrid multi-cloud, the Citrix platform license, include the license type that is most heavily used by you all today. So user device, concurrent user licenses, so the license type will will not go away and you can most likely get even more from your environments and from your licenses by using that concurrent type. I'll round out this section on licensing by saying there were a ton of hyper specific environment questions in the chat, which I so appreciate and we will take into deep consideration. My best thing that Adam just said is to talk to your account team and or talk to your partner about your specific situation. There, every migration to licenses looks different. So we don't wanna give one size fits all advice, but there is more content in there than ever, more capabilities in these licenses for you to use than ever. So please talk to your teams. Also want to shift to the LTSR. So we had a lot coming in for the LTSR. One major question is Web Studio an option or a replacement? So looking at what's the difference between on-premises Web Studio and the web-based Web Studio and make sure that access is still correct. So my colleague Swarup is actually on the phone too. He is the PM for the LTSR. Swarup, can you speak to Web Studio a bit more in the LTSR and how it fits. Yeah, thanks, Monica. So Web Studio, uh, we have both options starting with Save at 2311, which is a CR uh, that was released prior to 2412 TSR. So you have both options. Uh, Web Studio is the default. Uh, it, when you install Web Studio, it goes to the default option, but you have the option to go back to MMC. Again, uh, Web Studio has been modernized to 
uh, help admins to be more friendlier with APIs and automation along those lines. Uh, so we, it is lightweight, it's faster, it has more capabilities. So compared to MMC, it's more uh, snappier and it has more feature support along the lines of automation and uh, search capabilities. Uh, but both options are available to you as an admin and you can switch uh, from the default option to the MMC if you decide to continue using that. Great. Thanks for disclosing those options. Also, we had some questions about mixing LTSR VDAs. So specifically mixing the 2203 LTSR VDA with 2402 infrastructure. Is that supported? Are there caveats? So can you give some more information on mixing LTSRs? Yep. So in this case, uh, let's say if you're talking about a CMAT 2402 site and a version of PDA that is, let's say, 1912 LTSR or 2203 or SCR that is, um, um, is uh, which was released a lower um, version than 2402, like 2311, uh, it, it, we designed uh, the configurations to be backward and forward compatible, meaning you can have a CMI 2402 site with an older version of PDA. The main thing that you have to note here is to take advantage of some of the newer features, uh, you probably need a minimum version of VDA, minimum version of Workspace app, certain specific policies. So these might not be available in this particular configuration. So in this case, you probably have to get all the required components to the minimum supported version or to the uh, same level as 2402, meaning 2402 VDA, 2402 Workspace app, the DDCs and databases all up to date with the latest policies and uh, uh, configuration settings that are needed to support that feature or that particular um, optimization. So again, the same thing is applicable if they'll say you have older sites like 1912 site or 2203 site, a newer version of 2402 VDA is compatible with that. Um, the basic functionalities and all those things should continue to work. Uh, but the main caveat here is that you know, sometimes for taking advantage of the new features, all required components need to be at a certain level. So that's where you have to review the uh, system requirements documents to make sure that um, those required components are uh, at the particular uh, desired level, so yeah. Yes, that's really important to note. Thank you for that added context. And I'm seeing, obviously we covered a wide breadth of topics in this webinar and we started with licensing and then started with the LTSR. I want to clarify again that the LTSR is a release vehicle. So it's a version that you implement into your on-premises Citrix infrastructure it were, if you are currently within your bounds of a previous license, you can absolute, and you have on-premises entitlements, you can absolutely still implement the on-premises LTSR as that is a release and not a license type. And if you switch to the new licenses, you can also leverage the LTSR. So again, just reiterating, it's license agnostic as long as you have entitlements to on-premises deployments. So I wanted to, to make that clear. Wanted to keep moving as well on the, the questions about the new features. I know we spoke a lot about Amazon Workspaces Core. So what licenses are required for Amazon Workspaces Core? I can speak to this. Any cloud-based license, so if you have an existing Citrix DAS license today, or if you've converted to Universal Hybrid Multi-Cloud or the Citrix platform license. So again, any cloud-based Citrix entitlement, you can leverage the Amazon Workspaces Cortec preview. And it should be built in, you should be able to see it in your web studio console inside of the Citrix cloud console today to start testing and take a look at. Also wanted to move into Uber Agent. So Christian, I've got some questions coming to you. The first one is, is the cost analysis, well, I guess this is Uber agent and monitoring overall. Is the cost analysis included in DAS or do I need analytics or Uber agent in addition? So that's the cost analysis in director, I believe. Yes, so this is a great question for Citrix observability as a whole, as this covers director, monitor, analytics, Uber agent. But 
to talk specifically about the question of where the cost uh, modeling and monitoring will reside. This is part of Citrix DAS Monitor, so the director that you know from Citrix Cloud. And this is a tech preview that will start to roll out. We're currently in a phased rollout approach, and it would automatically appear in your Citrix DAS Monitor as soon as it is available within your region. So there is no opt-in or request process. You simply need to wait until it appears. That's exciting. Uh, it's it's a huge tool that's coming up. So I'm sure our admins will be waiting with bated breath for that one. I'm going to keep going with the Uber agent section. So to Christian, can I deploy Uber agent on any physical computer or do I need to have a specific workspace app? So is it truly device agnostic Uber agent? I already answered a lot of questions also into this direction in, in the chat. Perfect. And, uh, first of all, Uber Agent is part of Citrix platform license and Uber Agent can, as part of the platform license, be deployed on any physical or virtual endpoint, as we said. So this means no matter if there is a workspace app or there is no workspace app, you can install Uber Agent. And that's the name already implies. It's, it's an agent that you need to install. And this agent will then report to the backend of choice, which can be an on-premises, let's say Splunk, or a cloud-based Azure uh, Data Explorer or Azure Log Monitor as an example. Okay, great, thank you. And then um, lastly, on the Uber agent section, looking at the backend, if an this organization is moving to Azure, does it mean they can make use of Splunk and Azure Data Explorer at the same time? I guess um, if you could speak just a bit more to the integrations, that would be great. Yeah, so the configuration of Uber Agent happens on per device configurations. So this means you can individually configure, for well, let's say laptops, a different destination than for servers. So this means you could uh, send certain data to Splunk and other data to Azure. But if a customer like in this question is moving from Splunk to Azure, then you could also define that you want first, as a first approach, send the data to both destinations at the same time. Or you can also configure that certain metrics shall be forwarded into Splunk and others for, let's say, threat hunting purposes, so security or, or SOC teams uh, to Azure Sentinel using Azure Data Explorer as an example. Yes, no, thank you for that context. Please keep an eye out via our social media, our blogs. We do these webinars a couple times a year. We also have masterclasses multiple times a year. So there is no lack of content for you all to take advantage of. So with that, I think I'm going to, to close us out there, but thank you to my fellow panelists and thank you for everyone joining me today. Have a great rest of your day.